There have been various times where the act of misremembering has been documented. This phenomenon seems to affect everyone across the globe. Number 10. One such instance of misremembering that seems to occur quite frequently is that of the passing of well-known individuals. Some people will believe that someone has passed away when they actually have it. This is one of the more common examples of the Mandela Effect that's popped up many times throughout the years. Such has been the case with Patrick Swayze. Swayze is an American actor born in 1952 in Houston, Texas. He's well known for the role that he played in Dirty Dancing, a 1987 film. In 2008, the actor had unfortunately been diagnosed with stage 4 pancreatic cancer. He had undergone chemotherapy as well as an experimental trial and unfortunately Swayze would later announce that the cancer metastasized and was found to have spread to his liver. 20 months after the initial diagnosis, on the 14th of September 2009, he succumbed to the illness. He'd been 57 years old at the time. That being said, many individuals all over the world remember the story going a little bit differently. Some remember that Swayze had in fact recovered from the illness, such as a Reddit user named Demon720. Two years ago, the user asked on the Mandela Effect subreddit if anyone else remembered it the way that he did. He explained that he'd been in an argument with a friend over it, and once he learned that the actor had in fact passed away, he fell into a deep rabbit hole. He asked if any of the other users remembered Swayze recovering. While most commenters disagreed with him due to the fact that most victims of pancreatic cancer don't survive, there were a select few who would believe that the actor recovered. One commenter who went by the username Quite Successful explained that the poster and others may be getting mixed up with the TV show that Swayze had starred in around the same time that he had fallen ill. They suggested that perhaps these individuals had thought that the actor recovered before filming but he'd actually continued his work even though he was terminal. Another individual seems to remember that Swayze had passed away twice. A user named Some Person 80 explained that he'd seen coverage of the actor's passing on the covers of magazines, but later found out that he hadn't passed on at that time. He found this out at the time of the actor's actual passing. Professor 4247 said that he recalled that same memory. There may have been another reason for this false memory, as put forth by Lynn's Moore. She expressed that there had been a video that circulated of Swayze at an airport saying, I'm a miracle, in reference to having lived longer than the expected term for pancreatic cancer. Due to this video, some may have thought that he meant he recovered. Another Redditor knew that he had passed away, but thought that it had been a few years prior to the actual year, and many others believed this memory as well. Many individuals on this platform seem to recall different versions of the story. Some thought he passed away prior to 2009, and some believe that he didn't pass away at all. Number 9. Sally Field was born in 1946 in Pasadena, California, where she would go on to become an American actress and become known for playing steely matriarchs. She starred in television roles including Gidget, The Flying Nun, and Norma Ray. In Norma Ray, she portrayed a union organizer and with this performance she'd won an Academy Award. During an acceptance speech, Sally Field had spoken the iconic phrase, You like me, you really like me. This line has been repeated over and over throughout the years in both television and film. The only problem is that's not what Sally had said. The actual phrase that the award-winning actress uttered during the acceptance speech for an Oscar that she won for Places in the Heart had been, quote, I can't deny the fact that you like me right now, you like me. And like all other Mandela effects, this one made its way onto Reddit. User Actual Sleep made a post that states, quote, Sally Field now says you like me right now. This individual remembered the line that many others recall as well, and one commenter referenced that it was parodied in The Mask starring Jim Carrey. It can be theorized that it's this movie that caused the Mandela effect, but not everyone has seen this movie and still seems to remember the line being somewhat different than what it actually is. One user had also set forth this theory by expressing that they wonder if parodies have become so popular that they end up overriding our memories of the initial quote or event. Many agreed to this theory as a possible explanation, but one commenter stated that this idea doesn't explain away the Kurt Cobain pictures where he's wearing a pink feathery jacket. The hypothesis may only work in some cases. 
Great Speckled Bird instructed followers to type Sally Field into the YouTube search bar, where an auto-suggestion reveals the phrase, Sally Field, you really like me. Another user told the audience of a PlayStation 2 Jeopardy game that repeated the iconic phrase, as most would remember it, after its release in 2005. He also suggests that it would not have been as iconic if she had, in fact, said, You like me right now. You like me. MammothBus6911 was surprised that many users were new to this conundrum and had first seen it five years prior. They explained that it was really strange how things apply to sections of people at a time. Perhaps the most famous line had occurred in a different timeline or an alternate reality. As some may theorize, it's possibly even the government that's taken out and replaced bits of information for unknown reasons. The correct phrase sounds awkward and out of place to most, and doesn't seem to be something that would be said in that way. If it had been worded this way, then why would so many aspects of our reality refer to it as, you like me, you really like me? Additionally, some may also believe that Sally's surname is Fields, when in actual fact it doesn't have the S on the end. Most people seem to be in agreement that something strange is going on with the Mandela Effect phenomenon. It remains one of the greatest mysteries of our world, or possibly the alternate worlds that needs to be solved. Number 8. Can the past be changed? This is the question that surrounds the Mandela Effect phenomenon. Scientists may be debating exactly that. Theories as to what the phenomenon might be range from the many worlds interpretation to quantum mechanics. The internet buzzes with various theories as well as examples of other strange enigma. In the world of alternate memories, there exists another. This time, it involves a scene from The Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring. In this film, there's a scene where Gandalf had uttered the phrase, Fly, you fools, but it's widely believed that he actually said, Run, and not fly. Could it just be another misquoted line, or perhaps there's been a timeline mix-up once again? This is the suggestion that user Affectionate Oil 7557 made one year prior. They had started off their post by stating that the Mandela Effect only proves that there are various versions of our universe that are colliding with one another. The issue is explained as follows, saying, In the scene where Gandalf is about to fall down the pit, he calls out, Fly, you fools! But this individual remembers the words being, Run, you fools! and so do many others. One Redditor explained that one of their friends is obsessed with the Lord of the Rings, to the point where his room looks like a Lord of the Rings themed shop. This friend is said to remember, run you fools, and not fly. So if there are some clearly obsessed individuals who remember the word being run, it just adds more to the mystery. One person explained that they had experienced this both ways, but initially heard it as fly, and only later thought that Gandalf had told them to run. While most of the commenters seem to disagree and believe that it's always been fly, there are some who have misremembered it as run and support the poster's theory. It's theorized by some that Gandalf was referring to making use of the eagles when they had uttered the command, but for some, this theory doesn't quite hold up. It's suggested that the eagles' theory does not hold up to scrutiny and that using them to fly to Mordor would be going against the element of secrecy that's said to be crucial to the mission. The eagles are also not versatile enough to be able to carry the entire fellowship on a lengthy journey, and it was only Gandalf who was able to communicate with them effectively. It's explained in length that in this film, Gandalf had taken the fellowship to the Misty Mountains where eagles are believed to reside. He wanted to take them to a nearby eagle's nest, but tells no one of the intent. But the plan goes awry when Gandalf must separate from the group, leading to the line that's believed to be telling the group to take the eagles. But this doesn't quite align with the rest of the movie, since none of the eagles had even been consulted about such a journey being made. Perhaps it's only suggested as a theory, due to the fact that Gandalf had been aided by an eagle who'd actually owed him a favor. Some believe that based on this, Gandalf would have never told them to fly. It's also suggested that the word fly may be in reference to flee, where the character is merely telling the others to run or leave. As for some, they didn't hear fly, nor run, but rather just some mumbles. Some remain uncertain as to whether or not the line had always included the word fly instead of run, or if it had been an effect of clashing realities. Number 7. William F. Graham Jr., known to most as Billy Graham, was born in November of 1918 in Charlotte, North Carolina. 
Billy had graduated from the Florida Bible Institute, and in 1939, he was ordained to the ministry by the Pineal Baptist Church. By 1950, the evangelist would go on to found Billy Graham Evangelist Association in Minneapolis. He would go on to become a very well-known evangelist in the United States. And just as many other well-known individuals, Billy had a Mandela effect associated with him as well. Reddit user Cove Dweller jumped onto the Mandela Effect subreddit with a title stating that Billy Graham had passed away in the late 90s, and the user was deeply disoriented when it happened again as recently as 2018. The user explained that between 1995 and 1999, he would journey home in the spring after the end of semester. Usually, he would bring some sort of reading material on the plane ride with him, and one year it had been a magazine. He couldn't recall which magazine it had been, but it was made from the face of Billy. The image had a dark background, and the evangelist was gazing up into a white light. Once he had arrived at the terminal and another newsstand, the user saw more magazines detailing the same thing. That evening, CBC News had allegedly run a clip of the funeral where Bill Clinton delivered a eulogy. Billy Graham had been Bill Clinton's personal pastor or spiritual advisor at the time. A big deal had been made about the passing, which ultimately led to the user and many others being surprised when it was later revealed that the same man had actually met his demise in 2018, with far less attention paid to it than before. The Redditor notes that he had no personal exposure to evangelism and knew that Billy had been famous to Americans through religion, and he had no reason to note when the man had passed away. The only reason he had remembered this was because of the magazines. The comments began to flood in, mostly in support of the user's false memory. One expressed that he remembered the passing happening in the 90s as well. This user's relative had a picture of Billy on their wall and said that he remembered watching a clip of the funeral. The relatives had laughed at him and informed him that he was, in fact, still alive. The Redditor didn't believe them, but a few weeks later, the evangelist appeared on TV, leaving the user in shock. Many others in the comments also remembered that Billy had passed away in the late 90s, but of course this was just another act of misremembering. Most people recall watching the funeral on television, but it seems that it never happened. CNN also did a retrospective of the individual's life and spoke of his relationships with past presidents. It appeared to many that Billy Graham had passed away again in 2018, after having already met his demise in the 90s. But others believed that it occurred in 2009, or in 2012, or again in 2017. The fact that most people remember that a big deal had been made of the man's passing back in the 90s only adds a level of mystery to this act of the Mandela Effect. Number 6. MASH refers to an American television drama comedy series that aired between 1972 and 1983 and consisted of 11 seasons. It had been based on a 1970 motion picture directed by Robert Altman. The show won 14 Emmy Awards and also received a Peabody Award. The show is said to be notorious for the various passings of some of the prominent characters. One such character had been Corporal Walter O'Reilly, referred to as Radar, who was played by Gary Berghoff. It was absolutely tragic when fans witnessed his traumatic passing, except it never actually happened. Despite many believing that the character had met his demise in the series, he actually remained very much alive until Season 8, when he was written out. He was also alive and well during the final episodes that he starred in, and this was simply another case of the Mandela Effect. Radar had been one of the key characters in the show up until the beginning of the eighth season. Berghoff became burned out by the show's schedule and from being away from his family, which had begun to take a toll on him. In the series, it was explained that Radar had been given a hardship discharge so that he could return to his family following the passing of his uncle. Radar was supposed to be the age of 18, even though Berghoff had been almost 30 years old. His youthful look had aided in concealing this. In the final episode titled Goodbye Radar, the character takes off a hat that he had worn through the series that had hid his receding hairline. He thought that this would be a good visual that points to how Radar went from being a boy to becoming a man throughout the war. A Reddit user named Gel1111 had posted to the MASH subreddit asking if the character had passed in the series because they'd seen something that related to this. It appears that the followers of this Mandela effect are split half and half. Some maintain that they recall Radar departing back to his family after the passing of Uncle Ed, 
whereas others appear to think that he passed away earlier on in the series, although it's not exactly sure why or how this memory had surfaced. The Mandela Effect has been theorized to be the result of reality shifts or multiple worlds colliding together. Perhaps this is why some people remember certain things that others remember entirely different. There are various examples relating to this strange phenomenon, and it's uncertain if we'll ever solve the mystery behind it. Some other notable examples include the well-known Luke I'm Your Father and Mirror Mirror on the Wall. It's even been suggested that the government has been altering such information at random, but if half the population remembers one thing and the other half remembers it differently, then this is certainly not the answer. There have been various studies done regarding the Mandela Effect, and it's been attributed to the results of misremembering that a whole community appears to share. Number 5. Another famous movie that's been subjected to the Mandela Effect is Silence of the Lambs, starring Anthony Hopkins as Hannibal Lecter. Silence of the Lambs is an American suspense film that was released in 1991, and it was the first psychological thriller to win the Academy Award for Best Picture Ever since the 1940 film Rebecca. Hannibal Lecter, portrayed by Anthony Hopkins, is often quoted saying the line, Hello Clarice, in a really creepy voice. But throughout the entirety of the film, this line is never said by Hopkins at all, despite many people remembering that he said it. One can even see the moment in their mind when they think of it, but when re-watching the film, the line is not heard once. This line is one of the most famous in the movie, but it never happened, and when Clarice does meet Hannibal, he simply says good morning. Additionally, he only appears for 24 minutes throughout the entire 118 minutes of the film, so there's really not a whole lot to sift through to find where he says the line that he doesn't say. 24 minutes is also a short amount of time for anyone to make up something that was being said or misremember a line. How can it be that the most well-known line is non-existent? That being said, there is the Silence of the Lambs book, and perhaps it's said in there. Hannibal Lecter is given various memorable lines that he's often quoted on by fans with their impressions of the creepy deliveries, and Hello Clarice is no different. There's been no solid explanation revealing where this misquoted line had originated. The only way to prove it is to rewatch the entirety of the film yourself, revealing that it's just another example of the strange Mandela effect once again. Of course, this was another example that made its way onto the Mandela Effect subreddit through the user NickADTR308 around a year ago. The title read, quote, I know for a fact, Hello Clarice is from Silence of the Lambs. He explains that in 1996, Jim Carrey said this line in The Cable Guy during the Medieval Times scene, but Hannibal only came out in 2001. It's further explained that a similar line was used in Scary Movie 2, when Hansen made Shorty say, Hello, Cindy. The post got many mixed comments. One individual explained that during the first Gulf War, they had to go to Dubai to fix some damage, and that the USO ladies had set up a projector and folding chairs on the pier in order to watch the movie. After the movie concluded, the crew would go around and greet one another as, Hello, Clarice. Some argue that Hannibal had never said this line and asked how would he have even known her name if they'd not met previously, since some individuals had been stating that he uttered this line upon their first meeting. Another Redditor explained that they too remember the line and had later noticed that it was not said during the movie. Some believe that this is due to people recalling the lines from different movies and getting mixed up. Others believe that this line was added in by the public through editing or a voiceover. This strange enigma has gotten stronger over time and also appears to be popping up more frequently in our everyday lives. Number 4. When asked about what the color chartreuse is, many people will picture a red shade or perhaps pink. Some people even recall a maroon color or dark magenta. But to our absolute horror, chartreuse is actually a shade of green or yellow green. This shade of green actually gets its name from the liqueur. One individual had taken to the Wattpad platform to discuss this strange Mandela effect. The user detailed that they'd had a discussion with their mother, who was an artist, about this color in particular. They'd been teenagers at the time and used this name to describe a magenta dress. The mother had been in disbelief, and so the teenager had rummaged through some of her childhood crayons to try to find a pinkish-red crayon that was labeled as chartreuse, but to their amazement it was nowhere to be found. 
The user had not thought about this for quite some time since, until some comments began to appear on the platform. They expressed that they're still astonished when a memory matches with theirs. Another user commented, stating that they made this exact assumption about what the color mix chartreuse had been. This individual had pictured a purplish pink shade. While many people seem to recall a different shade, it's almost always within the shades of red or pink. The commenter detailed that they didn't think that their misconception had derived from misremembering, but rather from the assumption that chartreuse was redder than it was green. The name sounds like the shade would be one used to describe dresses and bonnets of the Victorian era, as stated by this individual. Another person relayed reading about someone describing their red dress as chartreuse. A user named What's Up 4444 had taken to the Mandela Effect subreddit and presented a question to the audience, asking if those who had experienced the chartreuse Mandela Effect recalled the song about colors from Blue's Clues. In the video, the color is presented as a yellow and green mixture. One person's son had constantly sung this song, and they remembered the lyrics, which had indicated that the color was in fact a yellow-green shade. Redditors are in absolute disbelief and mostly appear to be on the same page. One commenter even points to the fact that the color is named after a wine or liqueur, which is generally pink or red in color. While some users express that they know that the color was green because of Blue's Clues, Others who had watched it as well still have the same Mandela effect of the color being that of a pink or red shade. Perhaps at one point there had been a movie or a show where an actor or actress was misinformed leading to the reputation and the changing of the memory regarding the shade. It can also be theorized that it had been parodied in a film of some sort, leading many to believe that chartreuse was not green. Whatever the origin of this misconception may have been, it's certainly weird that an entire community of people online immediately think of red, pink, magenta, or maroon when chartreuse is mentioned. This is another one of the Mandela effects that are split half and half, where one side remembers it being always green and the other side always remembers it being red. Number 3 did Carmen San Diego wear a red or yellow coat? One user posted to the Mandela Effect subreddit and said, quote, When I think back to watching the show as a kid in the early 90s, I remember her in a yellow coat, but no, it's red. Phil received some mixed reactions where some believe that it had always been a red coat and others remembered it being yellow. Carmen's outfit, though, does have a repetitive yellow in it, which may have caused this false memory. One user stated that her friend remembered a yellow coat, whereas she believed it was red. One user asked if perhaps the poster may be confusing Carmen with April O'Neil from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but this character appears completely different and wears a jumpsuit instead of a trench coat. Opinion Forums also remembers that the coat was yellow, but points out that Carmen means red, so it would make sense for her to have a red coat and not a yellow one. Another user, seemingly more appalled by the discovery, expressed that this phenomenon was becoming too much for him, and stated that he must have jumped time or something of a sort. He believed that Carmen was always wearing a trench coat that was yellow in color. There's so far been no solid evidence to suggest that the fictional character did in fact wear a yellow coat. Attempts have been made to scientifically explain the Mandela effect. The phenomenon is made up of memories that simply don't match our reality or history. There have been various examples named, and more continue to arise as time presses on. It also seems as though some people only find out about the Mandela Effect at a random time in their life, and then a community collectively agrees with it and believes the same thing. Explanations as to what may cause this effect have been attributed to false memories that have been the result of bias, misinformation, association, and even imagination. It's also possible that perhaps some things have been changed at random for unknown reasons, or been misused in later series, films, speeches, or songs, which further adds to the misconceptions or misquoting. This phenomenon, since its first case, has become the center of various conspiracy theories that range from government cover-ups and media payoffs, and has also seen suggestions such as alternate realities or slipping timelines. It's said that our brains are designed to perceive only one of these realities at a time, which is potentially why there's such a divide between communities, with certain Mandela Effect examples. Number 2. Life is like a box of chocolates. The ever-popular line from a 29-year-old movie, Forrest Gump, that was released in 1994, and won six Oscars in the year that it was released. 
Tom Hanks, the lead star, also won Best Actor. The film is said to have had one of the most memorable lines in it. The movie starts at the end with present-day Gump speaking of his life before offering someone chocolate and saying, My mama always said, life's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Everyone who's watched the film remembers that line and probably finds themselves quoting it every so often. But this was not what Gump said, and the error is so minor that it would be difficult to pick up if it wasn't pointed out. He actually said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get emphasizing the was as opposed to the is. It's a small error that makes all the difference to the line, and to most, it doesn't even sound right to be said like that. A Mandela Effect post was made about this example as well. User Altruistic Stage 1807 made a post stating that he knows that everyone's going to say that he's misremembering the line, but he has proof that the line did include the is and not the was and told the audience that he'd be posting a link to a picture in the comments. The image was of a VHS tape of the movie that reveals the quote as, quote, Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Most commenters backed him up, stating that they remember it as well, but it was soon discovered where this misconception had come from. Some of the users explained that Gump's mother uses the word is when stating the line, but Gump uses the word was when retelling the story. Another user explained that although the quote is written on the box of the VHS tape, it had not been said that way in the movie. He explains that it wasn't said by Gump or by his mother. But the user was able to back up her claim with the YouTube link, where the mother does in fact use the word is, and others had backed her up as well. This post caused a community debate in the comments section, where some had said that the quote did not include the is, and others said that it did. As some suggest though, both quotes appear to be accurate because Gump is retelling the story of something that his mother used to say. That being said, other Redditors have stated that supplying an image of VHS boxes, DVDs, or Blu-rays is not necessarily proof, because these tend to have inaccuracies and errors. For a few of the individuals, they'd never heard the word is being used in this line before, and this was certainly news for them. User Bonjo's 8 explained that she had a Polish book that had quotes from the movie. It was translated from Polish into English and revealed the word is, not was. False memories can affect a variety of aspects of our daily lives, including what we see on social media, television, and advertisements. In a case study that was carried out by researchers, it was found that the visual Mandela effect is a consistent memory error. Even though there's been a lot of studies carried out, it's still uncertain as to what exactly may be causing these collective false memories. Many individuals confidently believe that some of these events and quotes did in fact happen when they possibly did not or had been altered for some unknown reason. Number 1. There are most likely a couple of Mandela Effect examples associated with Neil Armstrong, the astronaut. Neil was an important figure in space exploration history, who had passed away in 2012. But some believe that the man had actually met his demise later than that. It was thought that Neil had lived a bit longer than he had. It's suggested, though, that this may have been due to a story of the one-year anniversary of the astronaut's passing. In the Mandela Effect subreddit, a user had explained he was in fourth grade when the astronaut had passed on. He explains that the science teacher had only briefly brought this up but what the user does recall is that on the day that Neil had passed away, there was a ring or a halo around the moon, or there'd been a ring or a halo around the moon during the time of his services. He stated that he recalls seeing a photo in 2012 on Google of this supposed ring, and so he decided to look it up again and it never seemed to have happened. After searching the terms on Twitter, much to his surprise, three other people remembered this happening as well. He additionally linked an image of the three Twitter users in question, all of which made their posts in 2012. The first had expressed that there had been a halo around the moon, and that Neil Armstrong left his heart on the moon. The next one had been a day earlier, and also revealed something about a halo, with the last being posted around the same time, referencing a cloudy ring encompassing the moon. Hope was not lost after all. If these three individuals had seen it, then there must have been something that happened, so where did the Google images go, and why do only a few others recall it happening? In addition to this, there's also a misquoted line that Neil was believed to have said, saying, quote, this is one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. But again, this is a small error, and almost unnoticeable until it's said aloud, 
in which case it doesn't sound quite right. The correct quote in question had been one small step for a man. He had not referred to mankind in general, but rather to a singular individual. There have been so many of these examples documented in history that it makes one question their own reality. It's a strange phenomenon that seems to be recurring, and it's experienced by the masses. Perhaps sometime in the future, we may come to know what's behind this strange event. But until then, the proof should be taken note of, to be referenced back to later on in life when a supposed alteration is made once more. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But my name is Ty Knotts, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.